Hi, I'm Brady Aiello with Quest College's Tutoring Center, and today we're going to be talking some more physics. We have a really common problem uh, with a block ramp system involving friction. And in the last video, we did it using static friction, but sometimes you might have problems that ask uh, about kinetic friction uh, with your block ramp system. So here we go. We're going to do the same setup that we've always done. First, we're going to draw a diagram and make it big. I mean, when I do these, they take up you know, maybe, uh, maybe a sixth of a page, just so I can draw everything cleanly and nicely, and I don't get confused. If you draw it really small, it's hard to see your shapes and what's going on, and you gotta just hunker over your desk and things get lost. So just make sure it's nice and big and easy to follow, because you're the one who has to follow this in the end. So we draw a diagram, we make and label a new coordinate system, and we label the forces. So, as always, We're going to make a coordinate system that, uh, that is based off of the pitch of this, of this ramp. So this coordinate system is going to have an x-axis that's parallel to the ramp and a y-axis that's perpendicular. Now we're going to label the forces now. Mg is always going down. And we have components on our new x and y-axis of Mg. And now we also have a normal force, of course. That rhymes too much. Way too much. All right. And now uh, we are going to have a force of kinetic friction. So when you hear kinetic, you want to you want to hear movement, right? Uh, kinematics, the study of movement, and and so uh, kinesiology has to do with moving joints. This, is a, this comes from a Greek word, and it means movement. So it, we know for a fact this block is moving down this, this surface um, if, if, if this, is being, this is being brought up. Now we don't, we don't know that uh, for sure. If they, give, if they give you both a, kinet, uh, a mu sub k and a mu sub s, so we have the coefficient of kinetic friction and the coefficient of static friction, and we have, we have different forces involved, and we don't know uh, the minimum force of static friction. Um, but, but today we're going to be focusing on this. And when I'm talking about you know, kinetic, you know, I'm talking about motion. Okay, so we know that uh, mu sub k is much smaller than mu sub s. And you can, you can find that out if you ever try to you know, push a big, uh, a big box or something really heavy across the floor, it doesn't budge, and, it, and it'll keep on pushing back at you, and that's the force of static friction. And then when it slides, you have the force of kinetic friction that's opposing you. And it's much less, it's much easier to keep it sliding than, uh, than to get it moving in the first place. So what we're going to consider is if this block is, uh, is moving down, we're going to say that, that this has overcome the force of static friction. Okay? And if it's moving down the ramp, um, what's its acceleration if there is a force of kinetic friction opposing it? So up here, we'll say f sub k is opposing it. Now it's really important that we actually know that f sub k is opposing it. We don't always know that. For instance, if, um, if we find out that, that mg sine theta is less than F sub S max. It means that the force of static friction, the maximum force of static friction going up here, we know that it's not moving anywhere. But if it's greater, or if it's, um, yeah, if this, if this force is going to be greater, then, then we know that that force of static friction has been overcome. And now it's sliding down the ramp. And if it's going down the ramp, then we know that it's going to have something opposing it. And that's going to be the force of static friction. So, in physics, it's really important that you have a real-world understanding of, of what's happening, when it's happening, where the force is pointing, and why it's pointing there. So, when you're drawing out your diagram, make sure you label things correctly, and make sure you have a solid reasoning for, for why what you say is happening is happening. It'll, it'll make sense uh, in your mind, it'll help you pull together the math, 
and it'll make your work a lot easier to follow and you'll get the answer right to, which is a big bonus. So here we go. Um, we're going we're gonna to solve the system without friction to determine the direction of friction. And we've already done that. Like in the last video, we realized that F sub K has to be opposing the motion. So it's pointing up the ramp, just like with static. We've labeled the friction force with the direction. Great. We've labeled it F sub K, we've given the direction up the ramp. Awesome. So now we write sum of forces in the x and the sum of forces in the y equations. Now remember, this is not this way. It's not, this is not x and this is not y. We're, we have a new coordinate system. This thing is all shifted. So here we go. We're going to start uh, with the uh, f, sub, f sub x. And, and it's also important um, to note certain keywords in these problems. Sometimes a problem will say something like, um, like what is the, the mu sub k, the coefficient of kinetic friction uh, for this system, if the block is sliding down the ramp at a constant velocity. Well, the first thing you do when you hear constant velocity is zero acceleration. If I'm going 60 miles an hour on the highway, I, and uh, I'm just constant 60 miles an hour, that means I'm not accelerating, I'm not going faster, I'm not going slower, I'm saying the same velocity. And so, um, if the sum of forces is, e is equal to m mass times acceleration, and I have zero acceleration, that means the sum of forces is zero. All right, And that's going to seem really weird because you have a velocity here, but it's constant. So that means that the sum of forces is zero. So let's try that out as a sample. Okay. Now we're going to ask, what, um, what is the mu sub k if the sum of forces, or the, I don't want to say it like that, what's the mu sub k in this system if there's a constant velocity of this block sliding down the ramp? It's not speeding up, it's not slowing down, it's just got a constant velocity. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction? So, what is the mu sub k? for a constant velocity down the ramp. So we'll start with the sum of forces in the x direction. All right, we got f sub k, opposing motion, minus mg sine theta, just down, down the ramp. And the sum of forces always equals mass times acceleration. Well, we know acceleration is zero because we have constant velocity. Constant velocity means acceleration is zero. So this whole term is zero. So we can say um, that fk sub k minus mg sine beta is equal to zero. And we know that f sub k is equal to um, the normal force times mu sub k. Now we can just uh, rearrange this equation to make it um, get these guys on, on different sides. Great. And now we're going to do a sum of forces in the y direction. Yeah. We have Fn going up, minus mg cosine theta going down. And this, of course, always equals mass times acceleration. But in, although it's sliding down the ramp, there's nothing happening in the y-plane. It's not accelerating off the ramp. It's not sinking into it. So perpendicular to the ramp, nothing is happening. There's no, there's no change on that axis. And so the acceleration is zero. So the whole term is zero. So we can say that Fn equals mg cosine theta. 
Now I just put these two equations together. We'll have mg sine theta equals fn is k, mg cosine theta equals fn. And just divide these two equations. Mgs are going to cancel out, right? These guys are going to cancel out. Fn is going to cancel out. We'll be left with sine theta over cosine theta. Sine over cosine is tan, tangent. So, say that mu sub k equals tan theta. Alright, this looks exactly like our last problem when we said that, that mu sub s would be equal to tan theta. So the setup, um, the setup on these guys is really, really similar. So, um, and, and what we're, what we're solving, um, what we're solving here is, um, is similar in, in a lot of regards, because, because all we're looking at is whether this thing is, um, is sliding down the ramp uh, with a, a constant velocity or zero velocity. Because that's what, that's what this f sub k minus mg sine theta means. It's gonna, it's, the sum is going to be mass times acceleration. But acceleration can be zero if something is static. It can also be zero if something is sliding at a constant velocity. You don't know. But this is, uh, this is how you solve the system. So really be, be careful about, um, about how you orient your vectors. Make sure that the force of kinetic friction is pointing in the right direction. If if it's not, um, you'll be you'll kind of get things a little uh, a little mixed up. But um, but one thing um, one thing you should keep in mind is that constant velocity. equal to zero acceleration. There's no acceleration with the constant velocity. I'm going to perk your, your ears up for keywords. So, just to reiterate, draw a big diagram, make and label a new coordinate system, solve the, friction, solve the system without friction to determine the direction of friction. Now, like I said, this wasn't really important in this example, but with more forces thrown in there, and with uh, coefficients of static friction, coefficients of kinetic friction, all kinds of things complicating it, uh, this will be a little harder to see. But make sure you, um, you know what's happening in the system with no friction involved. And, um, and then, once you find out the way it's supposed to be pointing, label the friction force with the direction, pointing in the right direction. And then just write your equations and solve them. Just uh, be prepared to solve systems of equations. Okay? This guy and this guy. We're not just solving this with one take, okay? You gotta get, get used to this now, of uh, putting two equations together and being very comfortable with it. So, uh, my name's uh, Grady Aiello with Quested College Tutoring Center, and uh, that's, that's all for now. Happy physics.